I recently got back from a trip to Oregon where I was chasing some waterfalls and relatively clear skies, uh, which is pretty unusual for Pacific Northwest. Uh, but during the process of shooting uh, long exposure waterfalls in the Willamette and around the gorge, um, I also did some, uh, I took some video work as well, uh, just to see how I would be able to incorporate it within uh, the kind of photography that I've been doing, which is long exposure photography. And in the process of recording video, um, I noticed that I could possibly combine elements of the video work that I was taking with the uh, long exposure photography that I was taking. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm able to make a more dynamic image, uh, obviously for internet or web, um, to uh, kind of tell the story of what my thought process was a little bit better than what a still image might say. So in this, uh, in these two images I have right here, obviously this is a long exposure image. My buddy Caleb is in frame and there's elements of this that I really like. There's also elements that I don't like. So I've got, because this was a two second exposure, I have a little bit of blurry um, leaves and ferns and stuff like that. Um, and then this waterfall is a little blown out. Uh, now there's ways in post-processing and also in the field of photography that I could uh, get around doing um, or get around these issues uh, like taking a shorter exposure which I also did but for the purposes of this video I'm not going to uh, be concerned with that. Uh, the other thing is this 25 second clip that I took where uh, it's about 5 seconds of what I want and then 20 seconds of what I don't need. Um, my thought process for my photo is actually having uh, the waterfall moving, uh, a couple of these leaves and ferns moving, um, and I don't need Caleb walking at the frame. Um, I also don't need these guys up here, which they were also present in my photo as well, but I went ahead and masked them out. So I've already gone through the process of how I edited this image. It's basically all done in Photoshop, but uh, I actually um, also used uh, Premiere Pro to cut the clip down so that it was only five seconds long. And I saved that to my desktop, um, which is right here. Uh, this is Saheli Falls. So I'm going to drag this clip into Photoshop right now, and this will be the base for my image. So as uh, this clip is loaded into the video group, um, I only have, this is about five seconds long, this clip right here. Um, and I want it to be longer. I want it to be 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this clip four times and they're all in the same group. Um, now the problem with this is when I play through the clip, as soon as it hits the second copy, it's going to start over. And I don't necessarily want that to repeat itself over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do to uh, fix this issue that I have is I'm actually going to uh, create like opacity masks that are gonna go in between each frame so that when uh, the video plays back, it's gonna have clip, an opacity mask, clip, opacity mask, clip, opacity mask, clip. And I will do this right now for you. So all I really need to do is duplicate a layer, drag it on top of the video group so that it's on its own layer here. And I'm gonna drag this right into the middle right there. Now, if I click, uh, I'll just rename this opacity mask. And if I click this drop down right here, you'll see uh, some time frame markers. And I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna have this selected and I'm gonna drag the, the um, whatever this thing's called, right to the front of the clip. And I'm gonna click the uh, stopwatch right here for opacity. Um, 
or first I'm going to reduce the opacity down to zero. I'm going to click the opacity stopwatch, and then I'm going to drag into somewhere in the middle of the frame, raise the opacity all the way up to 100. It's going to drop a time uh, a timestamp right into place, and then I'm going to bring this to the end of the clip, add another stamp, reduce my opacity down to zero. So now when I play this back, you will see that it's a continuous loop. Now, the easiest way to apply this to the rest of the, uh, the video is to just duplicate the opacity masks and I'm going to drag them. I'm actually gonna butt them all up against one another. Um, and that is pretty easy right there. So we'll do this one more time. There you are. Now it's applied to all the masks on here. I'll play it back and then you'll see a continuous loop for uh, about 24 frames. So this is running through. Um, I'm pretty much done with the video part of this endless loop of the waterfall. And now all I wanna do is bring my photo that I have in Lightroom and make it a mask on top of my video. So I'll go back into Lightroom. I'm going to right click on my image and go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. And then with Lightroom adjustments, I'll click edit. And now that this is loaded, I'm going to select the image and drop it on top of here. Uh, it's gonna talk about the depth. That's because with video, it's actually, it was cropping the video down. Um, and I don't really care about that because I'm just using this as a mask. As you can see, the image is huge. So I'm gonna do Command T to grab my free transform. I'm gonna hold Shift and Option and reduce it down zoom in and get it as close as possible and when I reduce the opacity you're gonna see that there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of overlap uh, it's pretty close um, but really all I really need to worry about is this right here and the ferns and the leaves um, so after this is in place I'm going to add a layer mask to this I'm going to open my brush tool and with black selected as the foreground color, all I need to do is go ahead and brush in the waterfall right here. And then I'm using a uh, high opacity. Um, you might want to use a lower opacity, uh, but I've edited this before, so I know exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and then brush in here as well and the reason I want to use the ferns is because it helps with the foreground kind of showing uh, movement here so it's not just like an individual standing in frame but also uh, the it, it shows that like I made a deliberate choice to choose somebody that's frozen to frame and I'm only selecting a few uh, parts on the image um, so the layer mask is at, was actually placed at the very end of the clip. So I'm actually gonna bring this back to where um, the end of the video clip is. And then I'm gonna drag this all the way to the beginning so that it acts, act, acts as a layer mask to the entire clip. So when I go ahead and play back, you'll see that the only things that are moving is the waterfall, uh, the um, leaves down here and then the ferns just a little bit it's a little bit blurry so I'm gonna have to go back in and just kind of clean up around the edges so that uh, this green back here isn't so 
look so out of focus, but um, yeah, that's pretty much how you make a, um, how you incorporate video and still photography together to get a little bit more of a dynamic looking image to kind of portray your story a little bit better. Um, if you have any questions about how I went about taking this long exposure photo or any questions about Oregon in general, I had an amazing trip. Uh, I can't wait to go back to the Pacific Northwest again. Uh, two weeks there was not long enough. Um, two weeks living in a car was more than long enough, so I'm going to better plan my trip in the future. Um, but I hope that this video helped you out and uh, look to uh, talk to you again in the future. Thank you.